Hello everyone and welcome back. A couple of months ago we released a video about the modifications we made to the interior of our Winnebago view and some of you asked to see a video about the exterior modifications we made. So here it is. Winnebago put two 100 watt sun power flexible solar panels on our 2019 view. We recently learned from the View Navion Facebook group that Winnebago is recommending that anyone with these flexible panels on their roof should remove them because they are damaging the fiberglass roof. They are attached directly to the roof and the high temperatures caused by the sun beating down on the panels causes heat to build up between the panel and the roof and damaging the fiberglass roof. With that in mind we decided to remove the flexible panels and if possible preserve them for use as portable panels in the future. The first step was to remove the six screws holding down each panel. These screws go directly into the roof and caulk is applied under the panel to further hold the panel into the roof. Once the panels are removed, I plan to fill each screw hole with a, t a dab of caulk and apply a bit of Eternabond tape over the hole to prevent any leak. Once the screws were removed, I used a dull scraper to lift the panel and while applying constant upward pressure, use the scraper to cut the bond between the panel and the roof. Make sure the scraper does not have any burrs on the edge because you will scratch the roof. This scraper is well used and doesn't have much of an edge and that was perfect for this job. This was strenuous work but only took about 30 minutes per panel. After the panels were removed, I thoroughly cleaned around the screw holes first by scraping as much dry caulk off with the scraper and then used denatured alcohol and a 3M scrubby pad to remove all residue an inch or so from the screw hole. I then squirted some caulk into the hole and applied about a one inch square piece of Eternabond tape over the hole. That was enough for one day. The next day I started cleaning the roof where the panels used to be. Again, I used a dull scraper to scrape as much caulk residue off the roof as I could. Then I went to work with the 3M scrubby and denatured alcohol to remove all of the residue. Winnebago recommended treating the area where grazing may appear with Raptor Truck Bed Liner. I used the aerosol product with good results. This stuff is tough. I taped off the area to be treated so that I would not get overspray everywhere. I then lightly sanded the area with 80 grit sandpaper and wiped the area down with denatured alcohol and a cloth so that it was thoroughly clean. Then it was a simple matter of spraying the Raptor product to cover both sections where the old solar panels were positioned. I am really happy with the results. The finish is durable and lightly textured so walking on it is more sure-footed. One day I may coat the entire roof with this stuff. I cleaned up the old panels and tested them and they still work so I decided to keep them as portable panels. Our utility bay with the electric and sewer connections are has an external solar connection port located at the back of the cabinet. I purchased a 25 foot cable with proper connections at each end to use with these portable panels. When not in use, they store securely out of the way over the roll bar in the Jeep. To replace the flexible panels we had on the roof, we shopped around and found these new power 210 watt rigid solar panels. Dimension wise, they barely fit on the roof but we still have plenty of room to walk around if we need to. We installed two panels giving us a total of 420 watts on the roof. With the flexible panels we salvaged, we have solar collection capacity of 620 watts under perfect conditions. Installation was pretty easy. We used these stainless steel standoffs that we bought from Bob Kelly from the View Navion Facebook group. These feet are attached to the roof using special VHB tape, so no drilling into the roof was required. The RV uses SAE connectors and the new power panels have MC4 connectors. So this required an MC4 to SAE adapter cable for each panel. The RV and these panels also have reverse polarity. What this means is the solar panel positive and negative cables are reversed 
So we had to use a SAE polarity reverse adapter on each panel before connecting to the cable junction box on the roof. Our propane gauge in the RV is not very accurate. There is a more accurate gauge on the propane tank itself, but you have to crawl under the RV and use a phone to take a picture of it in order to read it. It is not very accessible. This Mopeka tank check device attaches to the bottom of our propane tank and tells us via a Bluetooth app on our phone how much propane we have in the tank. It attaches to the tank with magnets, but I cover the device with Gorilla Tape to ensure it doesn't fly off while traveling is easy to get to when the batteries need changing. A button cell battery powers the device for six to nine months. With this mod we decided not to mount the WeBoost antenna to the roof or drill any holes in the roof to route the cables. Our view has a coax cable that runs from the electric bay all the way to the cabinet where the kitchen TV is located. It is intended for connecting an external satellite dish. We don't have a satellite dish, so our WeBoost antenna connects to the area behind the TV via this coax cable. In an effort to get the WeBoost antenna as high as possible above the RV, we attached it to our Harbor Freight flagpole using a pipe clamp and mounting bracket that came with the WeBoost. We had to modify the flagpole a bit by removing the finial to accommodate a flag light, which is that white saucer-shaped device just below the antenna. The light had a hole in the center, but it was not big enough to accommodate the antenna shaft, so I had to drill it out a bit so the shaft would fit. We then attached a coax cable to the antenna and extended the flagpole above the RV roof line. The other end of the coax cable is attached to the portable satellite connection in the electrical bay. This connection comes out behind the television in the kitchen where we hardwired the WeBoost transmitter to a 12 volt line with a switch. If we don't need the WeBoost, we can just shut it off and not bother connecting the wire at the flagpole. The best part is no holes drilled in the roof. We use a Harbor Freight flagpole that sits in one of these bases that you put under a tire or in our case what we use is the uh, stabilizer jacks on the RV. To stabilize the flag once it's raised up we use a suction cup grab bar. It adheres very well to the side of the RV and then I use a small piece of pool noodle and some bungee cords to attach the pole to the uh, suction cup grab bar. This keeps it pretty steady and when the wind is blowing, the flagpole doesn't uh, hit the side of the RV. In the first few weeks of traveling, I learned that I did not like attaching the hose to the stock water connection. The plastic knob was hard to get tight and would always leak. I added this 45 degree garden hose elbow and tightened it until it wouldn't leak. Then I added a quick connect fitting to the elbow and to my zero G hose. Connecting the fresh water hose is now a snap and the 45 degree elbow takes some tension off of the fitting when the hose is connected. The outside cabinet doors on the View Navion are the worst design. Instead of opening sideways like most RVs, they open up. You have to get on your hands and knees and climb under the doors in order to access the cabinets. I found this helpful hack on the View Navion Facebook group where I simply moved the lift arm bracket up one screw hole. Doing that adds three or four inches to the height in which the door opens, making it much easier to access the cabinet. We use a Blackstone griddle for most of our cooking. We use it almost every single day. It didn't take long to get tired of replacing those one pound Coleman propane bottles. This mod was easy for us because we have a propane generator.
propane supply line runs to the generator cabinet on the passenger side of the RV. The generator is connected to the propane line with threaded brass fittings. I simply turned off the propane, disconnected the fitting at the generator, connected the T-fitting to the propane line, reconnected the generator hose to the other end of the T-fitting, and then connected a short propane hose to the third connection on the T-fitting. I used a short propane hose with threaded fittings on each end. To one end, I added a quick connect valve. I drilled a hole in the cabinet just aft of the generator bay and passed the short hose through the hole and into the cabinet. I drilled a second hole in the bottom of that cabinet so that I could pass a 12-foot propane hose into the cabinet and still be able to close the door. When not in use, I put a rubber stopper in that hole at the bottom of the cabinet. The Blackstone griddle comes with a regulator, but that isn't needed in this case because the propane line feeding the generator is already regulated. We added this low pressure conversion fitting that screws onto the griddle where the regulator used to attach. Now we can cook without having to keep those one pound bottles handy. Our awning manufacturer, Carefree, sells a kit that adds motion detection to existing awnings. The motion detection will retract the awning if there is a sudden movement of the awning like by a sudden gust of wind. We usually bring our awning in when we leave for the day, but on occasion where we forget to do that, we now have some peace of mind that if the wind picks up while we are gone, the awning will retract itself. The kit comes with a new double switch. One switch extends and retracts the awning and the other switch cuts power to the awning. We like that feature because once we retract the awning in preparation for moving day, we can kill the power to the awning and know that it cannot extend on its own. The kit also comes with a remote dongle that can be used to extend or retract the awning as well as control the LED lights. We can turn the lights on and off and dim them as well. The kit is Bluetooth enabled so everything can be controlled from our phones. This has come in handy on several occasions where the wind picked up while we were in bed and we were able to retract the awning without having to get up. The motion sensor can be adjusted for various sensitivities and has saved us on several occasions when the wind unexpectedly picked up. The awning automatically retracted. This is a pretty simple mod. These bug screens are designed to keep flying insects from getting into the exhaust system of our furnace. We haven't had any insects living in our exhaust fence, so I guess these things work. But then again, I've never seen any insects flying around these screens trying to get in. This is another simple mod, but we wanted to have the ability to hide some keys so that if we ever locked ourselves out of the RV we'd have keys to be able to access the RV again. So what we did is we replaced the key lock on our basement storage with a combination lock. This lets us hide keys in the basement and then if we ever get locked out of the RV we can use the combination lock to gain access to the basement, get our keys and gain access to the RV. So that's it. That's just some of the mods that we've done on the outside of our RV. If you'd like more details on any of these mods, please leave a comment below. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and consider subscribing. It'd really help us out. I'm just gonna drive, drive, drive. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, click that little bell, and hit that thumbs up.